Uh, so drawing the tongue, um, so I've put in uh, quite a big shadow up here with um, lots of blues and purples and just started to add a little bit of like a burnt carmine in the in the top here um, and now what I'm what I'm just starting to do is just add in this is a white polychromos that I'm using um, not particularly sharp as you can see um, and I'm just adding some of these the the lightest lightest of these highlighty bits which are quite a bright white um, because I want them to stay really white um, before I put any of the pink in because otherwise they they will take on sort of like a pinky hue so I'm just adding in just a um, just a few of those little white bits and then I can increase the pressure on those as I start to layer in the other colors um, just to get rid of the the tooth of the paper that's coming through okay so just putting those in there and then actually I'm just going to put a little bit extra in here as well and then I'm going to come in with a layer of it's actually the uh, luminance burnt sienna 10 percent um, and I'm just going to come in and add a layer all over the uh, tongue area where there isn't any any other pencil in there now this is going to go on really quite it's going to look quite rough um, sometimes the luminance pencils can go a little bit scratchy and I've found just um, sharpen them up um, and, they, and they're fine or just give them a bit of a, a scrape on some sandpaper or something like that so the tongue that I'm drawing is it's got some really quite um, bluey pinks um, up here really, really sort of bluey purpley pinks up here which I'm, I'm going to add a little bit later um, but just adding in quite roughly and the grain of the tongue the photograph I'm using isn't isn't great um, it doesn't show a huge amount of detail but obviously I can see light and shade uh, so I'm just adding in the pencil quite evenly um, but quite roughly so I'm getting this even coverage but but very lightly so I'm not taking up all of the tooth I'm not sort of squashing any of that tooth down and you can see it's not not very precise um, obviously coming around the edges and everything you, you need to be need to make sure you don't overlap but um, it's quite quite scribbly really so just adding all of that in there Okay, so that's going to give me a nice base um, for my uh, tongue. Um, with tongues, it's a it's a bit. Sometimes it's a bit hit and miss as to what colours to use. I've got my light flesh here, but this is a bit of a a creamy pink rather than a pink pink. So I'm I'm not sure that this would work particularly well. It might work in some places. So I, I might just add a little bit in just to um, cover up some of that tooth. But it's not the best colour for tongues. Um, it's just slightly the wrong hue really. It's I think it's too warm a pink. I want a, a cooler pink really with a with a blue base to it, which might sound a little bit weird but um, I think you'll see as we go along this 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 pink is, um, is not the right pink really for a tongue but I'm just putting little bits in here and there just to help um, with the um, with the tonal values more than anything really and just to fill in a little bit of that tooth and make it a little bit smoother in fact it's quite similar to the um, the pink that we put down before the luminance one right okay and then I'm gonna go with uh, so this is pink madder lake now I I don't know whether you can see on there you can see some little stars after that number 
that shows you the light fastness of this particular colour. Um, and a two in the Faber Castell, I think, is is anywhere up to a six in light fastness. So you, you don't know whether it's a it's a good light fast or it's um, a, a mediocre light fast. So I'm not I'm not overly worried um, about that, and I am going to use it. But I think it's something that the artists who create um, pieces that they sell and commission work and everything, we, we really need to be um, looking at the light fastness of the pencils that we use to make sure that we are using pencils that are um, going to create pieces that last. So this is a better colour. Uh, I don't know whether you can see here when I said that I wanted more more of a colder pink, a cooler pink, a blue based pink. This pink um, is basically that colour. This is a good pink. Um, so I'm going to just layer all of this down again. I'm using the sort of roundy action. Again, you can see it's not sharp and you can see how actually it's um, starting to flatten down on the point and I'm OK with that. Um, you hear a lot of people who, who start to use the pastel mat um, becoming a little bit frustrated with the fact that their pencils get worn down really, really quickly. Um, I think that is more of a case if you um, sharpen them all of the time because obviously they are going to wear down really quickly if you sharpen them and sometimes when you sharpen them the sharpener can go on forever and you, you end up sharpening half the pencil you know and you're like oh my goodness um you had a brand new pencil and, it, and then it ends up being half the size so i um unless i'm doing really fine detail work i don't tend to sharpen my pencils all that often um I, I feel that, you know, the, the, the lightness of the layers that you're adding in um, and just plotting in the colour and everything to begin with, you, it's not necessary to have a, a really sharp pencil. OK, so when I said that I wasn't going to go over these highlighted bits, I, I lied. Um, I am doing. <laughs> um, sometimes you think you're going to do something um, and oops and then you do something completely different um basically because you don't really know exactly you know what's going to happen um when you put the pencil down you, you it's not entirely certain how it's going to work so i'm going over this bit here which is a um th this is part of a uh, dark indigo that i've put in here and you're starting to get that really nice deep purpley look here um so just pushing this pencil up into this dark area and I'm going to bring this down in, in a little bit and add some more dark blue into there to add that really nice purpley colour. And using these nice um, circly movements, you can start to blend into the colours that you've already got sitting there. So you haven't got like a big straight line. Um. So I'm using my pencil quite near the end. I'm not using hard pressure, but I'm using these little um, circular movements um, on the tongue just to get that the, the sort of the, the smoothness um, into uh, the paper. And it's giving me quite an even coverage of the colour as well. So this is the Clairefontaine pastel mat, the dark grey that I'm using. Um, it is my favourite paper to work on. I use the white and the dark grey mostly, but I have to say the dark grey is my all time favourite. So this is quite quick. The coverage is quite quick. I'm just going round and round in circles, adding in that pink. I think sometimes it's a bit scary when you look at when you're drawing animals and, you know, things like that. And then you, you suddenly get this bright, bright, bright pink out and you think, oh, my goodness. But, um, you know, you really do need the brightness in there you can tone it down but there are parts of this tongue that are really quite bright so 
So the pigment in this particular color of the uh, polychromos, it comes out really quite thickly. The pigment in each of the pencils reacts differently on the paper. Um, some are quite grainy when it goes down on the paper. Some go down really quite smoothly. Okay, so we've got that in. So I'm going to go over again with, I'm actually going to use my cold gray one here. It's a brand new pencil. Um, and I'm going to just start um, going in to create some uh, highlighty bits. Um, and this is going to give us a more 3D effect on the tongue. So again, I'm using this, um, this sort of scumbling technique. I'm going round and round in circles. I'm using very light pressure. And the more you layer on this particular paper, the smoother it becomes and the more you can start to add in your um, details. So we've got a little, like a funny little crease in here, which I can come in um, again with a darker colour slightly. So always looking at my reference photo. Making sure that I've got everything going in the right places. here as well so just oops lightly laying the um, the polychromos cool gray is um, it's almost like a, a, pale, a really pale blue and it's a really good color for especially on tongues and um, on eyes as well, for helping to smooth out those bottom layers um, and just adding bits of, of highlight. And actually, it's much easier to get this smoothing technique and this smoothing effect when you use a pencil that isn't really sharp. It's, you can see it's starting to get quite flat on that on that edge there. So when we talk about layering, it, it, it isn't just about filling the tooth up with lots of layers of the same colour. Layering for me means that you can use all sorts of different colours over the top of each other to create effects and to create colours that you wouldn't necessarily find um, within your um, tin of pencils. And that's what's so lovely about this medium that you can create all of these great colours that don't necessarily appear as, a, as an actual pencil. And as you use them, as you work with the different colours and you, you create sort of similar, similar colours in the pieces that you draw, you start to figure out which colours work best. Uh, together 
and also which brands work best together. So using the luminance as a base layer on this tongue, because it's a softer pencil, you can get a more even thicker coverage quicker, particularly on this type of paper. Um, and I also find that with the light fast as well, the new Derwent light fast, if you add in a um, an initial layer of some of their colours, that it can be really, really helpful. And you can see how quickly, um, you know, it becomes quite uh, tongue-like. Right, so we're going to go back in with the Pink Madder Lake and just very gently go over areas of this. Again, to smooth. When you hear people talking about light over dark and dark over light, this this is basically what 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 they mean. Um, the dark being the pink madder lake, the light being the cold grey one, and it just helps to create depth in your piece um, and smooths out. So you can see how smooth this one, can you see? It might not be shown particularly well on the video because it does pick it pick it up quite grainy, but it, it um, you'll have to believe me when I say it, it's really starting to uh, nicely smooth out the colour on this tongue. It's got an edgy bit here. I'm going to come back into here in a minute with a darker, probably okay. So let's go for Um, so we've got dark indigo here, which is what I've got up here. But I'm going to pull some down into this area as well, very, very, very lightly. And you can still see still, I'm not using a, um, a really sharp point. And it just means that your pencils will last longer. The other thing as well is, you know, if you use a really nice light pressure, you're not going to wear your pencils down as much either. So just pull in this dark area. So where it's darker up here, I can start to use a little bit harder pressure. It's still light, um, but it's slightly harder. I think if you put your pencil onto your, the back of your hand um, and just press down on the back or, or draw on the back of your hand, a really light pressure is pressure that's not, or you're trying not to indent the skin. Um, and then you can go sort of, you know, harder and ha harder from there and sort of indent the skin a little bit more and a little bit more. Okay. So I'm not going to bring the blue all the way down here because this is actually a dark pink down here. So I'm just going to leave the, um, the uh, crease of the tongue. I'm going to introduce a little bit of the dark indigo down here where this shadowy bit is. And 
um, and introduce some blue in here. So it's it's really not. It's just about mark making and and adding colour really. Um, you know, as as long as you as long as you're following your reference photo and you 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 have an understanding of what colors you can see it really isn't a, a tricky process um I, I find it easier to sort of plan it in my head especially things like tongues and noses and eyes that type of thing to plan in my head first of all what i think i should be doing so i think i should be going in with you know a pink what pink should i be using what you know what type of pink is it maybe even have a bit of a scribble on um on a loose piece of um or a scrap piece of paper just to see what the color is going to look like when you put it down um and then understanding what other colors are going to do to that color when you lay them over the top of each other So you can see here it's not blending particularly well but when I bring in my Pink Matter Lake again and maybe some of my um, red violet or something like that it will start to um, blend it a little bit more. Okay, and just down here very slightly. Right, so bring in my um, pink metal lake again, and then just very gently over the top of those layers there. And because I've gone in gently, and because of the qualities of the pastel mat, you can actually almost move the pigment around because it's sort of sitting quite loosely on the top of the um, surface so you can move that pigment around really quite nicely to get an, a nice blended effect and I'm going to bring that down here a little bit and then just darken these areas here slightly It's, it's very easy to um, overwork an area like this and actually the majority of the time when you're layering things like fur and everything like that when you think you're finished you know you've still got really quite a few more layers to go I feel with tongues when you think you're finished you, you pretty much are finished or you've overworked it a little bit um, because you don't want it to you want it to still be quite subtle but you still want to have covered all of the tooth up but actually it doesn't take a huge amount of coverage I think probably because of the pigmentation of these particular colours. So you can see me going over and over and over this bit here. I'm using the lightest possible pressure just to move that that white bit of white pigment around just because it's sitting sort of quite heavily on that edge there and then we can do the same here so it's literally just nudging the pigment around without putting a huge amount down on the paper right so I'm going to come back in with the white. Now I'm let's let's try this the polychromos white. Um, and what we might end up doing is 
coming in with the luminance white or the derwent white which are softer I might just go give us a a softer feel here in fact let's just try that okay so this is the luminance white and actually I am going to sharpen this one okay so this is the luminance white and I'm just going to use this in these lighter areas again so the luminance is a wax based pencil really nice and soft and a really great um, not that I'm particularly burnishing here as I'm not going in with a huge amount of pressure but it is a great pencil for burnishing and for squishing all of those colours together. So I want to just get this curve here. It's a very subtle curve. Some, this particular photo doesn't have an awful lot of detail but some tongues have got um, like ridgy bits and stuff on them I I mean if it's part of the a real characteristic of the dog then I, I think it, it, it probably needs to go in but um, sometimes they can look a bit weird um, I was doing one on a on a previous dog portrait and he had some like little wiggly line things going on and actually I left them out just because I thought that I, they'd look a bit strange, um, so I didn't put them in. But I think that's a call that you, you know, you need to take. So just brightening these areas around here. Okay, and then I'm going to use the um, red violet just down this middle bit here. Again, very, very lightly. And then probably coming into the, the Pink Madder Lake bit down here again. Um, obviously this is quite flattened, so I'm using the edge of it that's that's um, got a, a sharpie bit on it. So I'm, I'm not going in to sharpen it, I'm just using that edge that's quite sharp and just pulling that in here. And just picking up some of those edgy bits there again. And then I'm going to pick up a, a cold grey, yes, let's use the cold grey three, um, again just to pull some of that blueness down here. And again a good pencil for smoothing and just giving an extra little bit of tonal value in this area down here. 
it's not doing a huge amount um, it's just adding a bit of something and it's helping to blend out as well very lightly pull down the um, Don't Light Fast Oyster which is a really lovely icy pink and again just picking these bits actually this is probably a better one than the luminance to use it's softer still than the luminance and it's oil based really really nice pencil to use and there's another um, great icy um, pale colour which is called Arctic R again brilliant for things like eyes and noses and that type of thing So good. So I think bar sort of some little tweaks once I've got more of the fur done around um, the dog's nose and, um, and, and on the chin bit here. I think when they're a little bit more complete, I can go back in and potentially add a little bit more, but pretty much um that tongue is pretty much done um oops. Just focusing in a little bit um so that's that 